So one of the beautiful aspects of string theory is that it allows us to make contact between fundamental questions of particle physics on the one hand and to relate these to interesting questions in mathematics. And I think um, it's fair to say that F-theory is one of the key examples of the successful geometrization of physics and in particular geometrization of particle physics. Indeed, um, the manifold fruitful connections between F-theory and particle physics, for instance, as exemplified by F-theory guts, have motivated a lot of recent progress in understanding four-dimensional F-theory vacua and F-theory geometries. And this progress does go beyond the original phenomenological motivation. Two examples of such recent advances which I'd like to discuss in this talk are first the geometry of elliptic vibrations with extra sections. On the one hand, this is an interesting topic in mathematics and geometry in its own right. But on the other hand, it has direct relations with particle physics, namely these extra sections determine the abelian sector of the gauge theories. They affect the structure of Yukawa selection rules. And for example, if we think in terms of applications, they are essentially responsible for absence of proton decay operators in gut models or in other approaches to standard model physics by F theory. So to the extent that these selection rules in F theory, non-perturbative physics, and in perturbative models are very different, these U1s and therefore these extra sections are actually at the heart of the very motivation for F theory in the context of gut models. Second, a lot of progress has been made recently in the context of um, fluxes or more generally the gauge data, the C3 background. This ties again with interesting and intricate geometry on the one hand and is clearly crucial in four dimensional applications to determine, for instance, mathematical so I will start with a quick review of the model well group in F theory. The model well group has two pieces, a torsional piece and a non-torsional piece. The non-torsional sections um, will have an application in the first part um, in our approach to standard models in F theory um, in a paper that appeared today. Then I will discuss torsional sections in a recent paper here. And finally, uh, hopefully have time to also say something about the gauge data, C3 backgrounds, and applications. So, as we heard in Dennis's beautiful talk um, just before the break, F theory is all about elliptic vibrations, and in the context of elliptic vibrations, the model well group plays an important role. Let's first look at just an elliptic curve and think of it, for example, as um, the convex plane modeled out by a lattice. It is then obvious that there is a natural notion of addition of points. In fact, elliptic curves can um, also be represented as Weierstrass models, so as hypersurfaces in a way that project space. And in this representation, a special set of points are the rational points. These are the ones that have Q rational co uh, coordinates in X, Y, Z and lie on that hypersurface. It turns out that these form an abelian group under addition, the model well group. And this group um, is a finitely generated abelian group. So it has a non-torsional piece, R being the rank, and a torsional piece. When we promote the elliptic curve to an elliptic vibration to actually do F theory, then the role of these rational points is taken by rational sections. These are maps that associate to each point of the base a rational point in the fiber to the extent that these points are, can be understood as meromorphic functions of the base. So um, in our context, therefore, the model well group is the group of rational sections. Its zero element is given by the zero section, which in a Weierstrass model we always have. Namely, it's the um, 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 map from B to the point 110 in the elliptic fiber. The group law is inherited from the group, group law on the curve by fiber-wise addition of the points. And again, um, the famous model by theorem states that uh, this group is finally generated. It comes with a free part, in a free part, with um, R being the rank, and a total part. And these two have very two different um, meanings for physical um, applications. Namely, the free part is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the U1 gauge symmetries, as um, has been known uh, since the very early days and been investigated um, in more detail recently. And the torsion part um, is associated with the global structure of the non-abelian gauge group. Indeed, um, uh, in, re uh, in, uh, in uh, recent years, there has been uh, a lot of study of these actually ones via rational sections. The um, motivation, again, being that they give rise to actual selection rules, which are crucial in applications. But they are also a window to gauge fluxes and chirality, a certain set of gauge fluxes um, it's always uh, uh, very easy to describe in such models. And uh, beyond that, they are certainly of great interest 
um, in any theory uh, with mass as you want. So uh, whenever we are interested in what is actually possible landscape studies as such, we have to study these. And this is just um, a collection of um, people who have uh, dedicated uh, the past years to studying these. This is uh, um, not a complete list, but just to show that this is really very active. So in order to understand this model Y group in more detail, we need to recall a few key features about the geometry of our elliptic vibration, of our elliptic fourfold. In particular, the set of devices, or the group of, of um, devices on such an elliptic fourfold. Um, it is given first by the zero section. I'm assuming a zero section now for simplicity. So this is a copy of the base with <coughs> one point of fiber. We have the devices that are pulled back from the base, so the device are here, and which wraps, wraps the entire fiber. We have furthermore resolution devices, these are the P1 vibrations which we get when we resolve the non-abelian singularity in the fiber over a stack of brains, which would comprise the non-abelian gauge group. And for every gauge group, we have rank of that gauge group, many of those resolution devices, P1 fiber. And we have extra sections, extra rational sections um, of the type just discussed. And the key role in this business is played by the Shioda map. Namely, the Shioda map is a homomorphism from the group of sections to the group of devices, these guys. It's a homomorphism, which in particular, therefore, respects the group law, and which maps um, a rational section, the difference of a rational section with a zero section, to such an expression of, to such a linear combination of <coughs> devices, S minus Z minus pullback of something from the base, plus some rational linear combination of resolution <coughs> devices. This would be important. And the uh, crucial point is that it's a homomorphism, and that it obeys transversality, so um, the, uh, this linear combination is then orthogonal on, uh, in, in this sense on, um, in fact, the zero section, the resolution devices in these points. Okay, so why is this important? Why is particularly transversality important? First, because um, this gives the connection between the non-torsional sections and the ones. Indeed, we, the, by the Shiura map, we now have a type of devices. Uh, it is non-trivial for the non-torsional sections in cohomology or in homology. And therefore, it serves as the generator of the one gauge group by FM theory duality. We can expand the three form in terms of it. We get a one form potential, which then is the one form, as was also reviewed uh, very nicely by Dennis before the break. So, in order to engineer extra U1s, we need to engineer extra sections. And this is done by restricting the complex structure of the fiber such as to allow for these action of extra rational points in the fiber or rational sections. Um, so, we, we should think of the, the resulting models as non-generic Weierstrass models, as we, uh, if we like. The simplest example would probably be to simply start from a Weierstrass model in the so-called Tate form and simply stretch off the last term. So simply delete the last term. Then we see that in addition to the zero section point, x, y, z is 1, 1, 0, which we always have, we get an extra point that is always on the vibration, 0, 0, 1, because of such a restriction um, of uh, complex structure. And um, indeed, this can be generalized to factorized um, Tate models. Um, to treat those um, um, models systematically, however, it is uh, more convenient to start by a different fiber representations as we heard before the break. So for the most general rank one model, um, this was done by Morrison Park, it's, it's a specific 1, 1, 2, 4 vibration. For rank two, it's a P2, 3 vibration with blow ups, as we just heard. And uh, one can go beyond um, uh, rank three. And in fact, one can also uh, instead of such an analytic approach, choose a directly a toric approach and, for instance, classify um, all possible toric um, um, hypersurface embeddings of vibrations in, in this approach. And there has been a lot of work on this. So um, the application of all of this, as I said, among other things, is selection rules. Selection rules which we need in gut models to uh, suppress proto-decay. However, selection rules are, of course, important not only in gut approaches to um, um, to the standard model, but uh, more generally, um, in particular, if we are um, ignorant about um, what is really going on in particle physics and high energies, we might also be interested in exploiting um, in, in, in exploring direct paths to the standard model without an intermediate uh, gap group. This depends on our um, phenological preferences, and there are arguments pro and, uh, um, and, and con. Um, however, we are strength theorists, we want to understand what's out there, what the possibilities are. So it's interesting to study this. And it's interesting to study um, what the role of extra U1 selection rules in F theory is compared to perturbative models. So in this recent paper, we tried um, this little exercise. And we were interested in constructing F theory compactification to scale to SC3, SC2, times U1, times U1, with the understanding that one linear combination of those U1s would give rise to hypercharge. And the orthogonal combination must then 
be massive upon switching on flux and surface actual selection rules. So with this understanding, we started from the Z1 times Z1 vibrations, which then is described in detail, so I can simply flash them here. These are these P2 free vibrations with two blow-ups, um, S0, S1. These are these extra sections. I don't need to discuss this anymore. Um, in addition now, we need to um, engineer an SU2 and an SU3 singularity over two independent divisors. Um, there are various ways to do this. We chose the toric way uh, by simply um, restricting or factorizing these coefficients in our um, vibration in a suitable way. Um, there are, it turns out there are three possibilities to do this for SU2 and three for SU3 in this context, so altogether nine possible such toric enhancements. And um, uh, one can go through them, look at the resolutions in great detail, and therefore construct fully resolved vibrations. I want to spare you the details, <coughs> just the outcome is that um, we have the following type of meta representations. One, a uh, bifundamental, which could be uh, the left handed quarks in the standard model if we are interested in such an application. We have uh, three types of um, uh, doublets, in fact, so um, we could assign them um, with H up, H down, and L. We have four time, five times of three bars. Um, so some of them will be right in neutrinos, others will have to be absent in, in, in the masses meta spectrum um, in the standard model. And we have um, a bunch of singlets which can be, um, which are actually present already in these vibrations and which can be right in neutrinos or serve as actual singlets and singlets are, um, extensions. And then we put a lot of work into um, analyzing the uh, structure of the Yukawa couplings, um, the MSSM couplings, and the dimension four and five couplings. So we um, looked at which couplings are allowed, which are actually geometrically there. I spare you the details. And this is, of course, in one-to-one -one with the selection rules. The U1 uh, selection rules are in one-to-one -one with what one actually finds in the geometry. So one can now try, in these nine possible such co inequivalent configurations, try to match the matter that we have with possible matter in the standard model. Um, there are very many ways to do this, which we classified. Here's just one example out of a long list. So for example, if we take H up, H down as two fields on two different curves, the subscripts always mean that they are on two different curves. Likewise, for the right-handed forks and for um, the leptons, everything on a different curve, then um, indeed one sees that there are no dimension four parity violating operators thanks to the U1s, and the most dangerous dimension five ones are also absent. But one can play many more games. One can distribute curves, different families on different curves. Um, some of them are perturbatively light, um, um, or not, and this will then give rise to a large variety of, of, of actors of such couplings. So what? this is just um, as an exercise me. on application. You have only one copy of left-handed quarks? Uh, so again? How many copies of left-handed quarks do you have? We have one curve of, uh, for, for 3,2, so all three generations will have to sit Come on that from curve. on the same curve? On the same curve, in that case, yes. There is, uh, in that case, there is um, only one such. Okay, so um, this was the, these were the non-torsional, uh, these were the non-torsional sections. Now what about torsion in the model one? Well? So suppose we have a torsion section R. And suppose it is ZK torsional. What does it mean? It means that K times R minus Z, Z the zero section, is zero. That's the statement that it's ZK torsion. So um, this has uh, the following consequences. We recall that we, the Schroeder map is a homomorphism from the set of sections to the set of devices. It's a homomorphism, so therefore zero must be that homomorphism of zero, which is k times r minus z, which is k times phi of r minus z. So this is zero. So therefore, the Schroeder map itself must map this linear combi uh, r minus z to zero. So we have, therefore, a vanishing linear combination. So what, for the non-torsional section, gave rise to an actual u1 is now actually trivial as a divisor. Since this is zero, we therefore have a divisor, um, r minus z, essentially which we can equate with this extra factor here, a linear combination of the resolution devices, which we get from our non-abelian groups. And since the left-hand side is um, integer, so is the right-hand side. So the upshot is, in situations with ZK torsion, we get K-fractional linear combinations of resolution devices, which are integer. And this has important relations, uh, important co consequences for group theory. To Understand this, let us recall how the gauge algebra and the gauge group arise in F theory. So the Lie algebra, uh, as always, is specified by the co-root letters, the letters of co-roots. And their role, their role in this case is played by the resolution devices, in code, so um, things that happen in co-dimension one. 
The representation content, on the other hand, in um, every model is given by the weight letters. So the weight letters of possible weights of possible representations. This is what happens in four dimension two. Now the dual of the weight letters is the co-weight letters, something that has an integer pairing. The co-weight letters always contains the co-root letters because the pairing of the co-root with the weight simply gives the weights of the representation, which is integer. But it can have more elements, so it can be a, a finer lattice. If the co-weight lattice equals the co-root lattice, then the gauge group is simply connected. And this is the universal cover group, so to speak. However, in our situation here, we see that we get a new element um, in the co-weight lattice, which is not an element of the co-root lattice. We have a k-fractional linear combination. Nonetheless, it's integer. Since it's integers had integer pairing, in particular geometrically with um, these P1s that determine the weight letters. So we have a refinement of the co-weight letters. That's the message. We have a k-fractional refinement of the co-weight letters. So the dual weight letters becomes coarser. And this means we have a smaller representation content. So this way, one can prove that indeed, in models with ZK torsional sections, the um, non-abelian gauge group will always be non-simply connected. Um, it will contain the torsion part as uh, it's in its first fundamental group. Or put differently, the gauge group is not just the fundamental cover, but the universal cover, but it's that over ZK, where we think of dividing by the center associated with, in fact, um, this torsion. So um, um, this uh, general story one can now um, study in detail in explicit realizations. Um, indeed, uh, hypersurface vibrations with modern wild torsion have been studied um, early on by um, Morrison Aspenwall, who gave a beautiful list of um, hypersurfaces um, with the ZK torsion. Um, uh, Braun, Krim, and Keitel looked at all possible toric models, and they found that um, three of them have torsion. And there was also previous work, for example, Berglund and collaborators, who related this to uh, restricted um, SF2Z monotonies. So what we, did, what we did in this paper was to um, exemplify the structure that um, I just outlined for um, the models in uh, Morris and Aspenwald's list, Z2 and Z3, as well as a refinement of the Z2 model. And we matched them with the toric models, and we indeed confirmed the pattern that we just proved in general. Namely, the pattern is, if we have torsional model well group, then the following things change. In co-dimension one, ZK torsion automatically, automatically forces upon us a non-trivial, non-abelian gauge group of type G0 of ZK, something in which we can embed is at k-central. So this, um, it's, it, this always gives rise to non abelian gauge group. In co-dimension two, the matter spectrum is greatly reduced because we have G0 over ZK. So this is a way to avoid matter if we want to avoid it. And surprisingly, in co-dimension three, nothing happens. So um, there have been um, speculations that this might lead to further selection rules on the Yukawas. I also believe this when looking at this to my great disappointment, it's not happening. So these are the facts. No, nothing changes in co-dimension three. So, um, for example, let's look at the simplest case of a Z2 torsional um, vibration. Again, we start with the most general Weierstrass model in Tate form, and we can um, uh, think about what's really going on by, by looking at this in a, a step two process. So the first thing, again, we switch off this last term. We simply said A6 equal to zero, as I already said. Now the model Y group is Z, so we have one extra U1 factor, we have one extra um, um, uh, ra uh, rational section, which is non-torsional. Indeed, it turns out that in addition, one also has matter, charged matter, as Dennis also discussed. And this charged matter, which is charged on this U1, is localized, as it turns out, at a curve in the base, A3 and A4 equals to zero. So we have SU2 fibers in co-dimension two. Now, if we want a model with model Y group Z2, then Morrison and Aspinwall told us that we have, in addition, switch to switch off A3. So what happens is obviously that we get an enhancement from this of this co-dimension 2 SU2 singularity to co-dimension 1 SU2 singularity. Because A3 is now 0, so whenever A4 equals 0, we have SU2. So um, this means that um, we now get an enhancement of the gauge group from U1 to, <coughs> or from the gauge algebra from U1 to SU2. And um, the extra W boson is precisely this charged matter field. However, in this model, that's all we have. That's all the matter we have. So in the new um, enhanced um, uh, vibration, there is no extra matter. There's no source for extra matter. So indeed, the gauge group is simply S2 over Z2. No fundamentals are there. And this can, of course, be checked directly within this formalism, which I introduced before. 
one can explicitly um, resolve that vibration. It's a two-step process. Then one coordinate um, drops out. And one can see that one has an SC2 resolution device, but also a Z2 torsional section. And one can confirm that there is this extra co-weight, which is integer, and which forbids this extra fiber. And um, this picture can be, um, can, can be then uh, generalized um, also in the Z3 case um, to um, other interesting compact cleavage. So um, um, last topic I'd like to discuss now um, ideas about the gauge data in F and theory. So not everything is geometry in F theory. We also need um, input from M theory um, geology in particular. Um, um, uh, there is this M theory 3 form, which is a higher gauge potential and whose um, field strength would give rise to um, G4 form flux, which of course has been studied for a long time. Gauge fluxes in particular are a special type of such fluxes. They are transversal, one like in the fiber. And the good thing about them is that they determine the chiral index of charged matter. Um, one can argue by geology with heterotic, with 2B, or with M theory, that um, the natural pairing between um, the four form flux and the matter surface, so P1 fibered over matter curve, indeed gives rise to the chiral index. <coughs> However, this only gives us the chiral index. So if we want to go beyond that, we have to refine our specification of gauge data. So a natural question is, what is that refinement and what counts the actual number of n equal multiples separately as opposed to just the, charge, uh, the chiral index? So um, let's get some intuition from type 2b. In type 2b, in the simplest situation with no shenanigans um, of gluing, etc., we would be thinking of a gauge data along one single set brain. And the gauge data in the simplest case would just be given by the possible polymorphic line bundles on that seven brain modulo gauge transformations. And this group of polymorphic line bundles on the gauge transformations is the Picard group on that seven brain. And as is well known from uh, vertex oper uh, operator analysis, the um, uh, masses n equals one vector multiples at intersection of two such brains are then described by certain cohomology groups, zero, one, on that curve by pulling back those two line bundles to the curve and tensoring with the um, uh, spin bond. So what we need, therefore, in type 2b is, first of all, a good description of the Picard group. In physics terms, the Picard group, so the group of holomorphic line bundles, um, have part of the information is captured in the curvature, and part of the information is captured, in addition, in the Wilson lines. And mathematically, this means that the Picard group fits into this short exact sequence. One has a subjection into H11z, which gives the curvature, and the um, um, kernel of that map would just be the Wilson line map. However, this is too abstract. We never think in terms of this uh, short exact sequence, at least. Um, I don't. Um, in order, the reason why we can get a handle on this in type 2b is because there's this isomorphism between, between the Picard group and the group of devices modular linear variant, uh, <laughs> modular li uh, linear equivalence. So line bundles or gauge data up to gauge equivalence, sorry, is the same as devices modular linear equivalence. So um, this can be generalized to F theory, and this has been discussed in various approaches, slightly different language uh, for a long time, uh, starting to my knowledge with um, uh, Donagi's work and um, also other work, Chico Simons, twisted um, uh, differentials or, uh, or possible things. So um, uh, the, uh, what the language that is closest to this picture in type 2b, which we are very familiar with, is this one. Indeed, there it does exist an object that generalizes this short exact sequence here to this short exact sequence, namely one can define the so-called Deline cohomology group, um, the um, equivalence class of gauge data, and um, it subjects into H22Z. So these are just the fluxes, and the kernel of that are the Wilson lines, so to speak, or Wilson surfaces, um, the C3 backgrounds, which are flat, if you like. That's the kernel. So um, this would be the direct um, analog. So we should not just think about the fluxes, but actually about this thing. However, it's rather complicated and uh, very abstract. But one can concretely specify gauge elements in there, and therefore gauge data, um, by taking a detour via rational equivalence classes of four cycles. So rational equivalence class is the generalization of linear equivalence from devices to actual um, four cycles, so, so to higher co-dimension objects. And the Chow group is then the group of rational equivalence classes of such cycles. And in fact, um, the Chow 1 group of co-dimension 1 is the same <coughs> as the group of devices, and therefore of pairs. So um, in the one, for, for co-dimension one, um, the rational, uh, um, uh, um, uh, the group of rational co-dimension one cycles is the same as the group of line bundle up to equivalence. In higher co-dimension, which we are in, they are not the same. However, there exists a map, as is known in mathematics, from this group of uh, rational, um, 
four cycles into this Jalene cohomology group, which counts the um, gauge data. Um, so, so this map exists, and it's a map that is well-defined modulo rational equivalence. So therefore, as a strategy to think about gauge data beyond fluxes, um, we can do the following. We fix a four cycle. These are things that we have complete control of in the geometry. And we can look at the equivalence classes under rational equivalence classes of those four cycles. Their homology class will then be G4. And we can then do manipulations mod modulo um, rational equivalent because these will preserve the gauge data. This is not a subjective map, but it um, uh, at least it does give the gauge data in examples. And then um, we uh, went through um, the exercise, and uh, we could extract via intersections of such four cycles in the group of rational equivalence classes uh, with the four cycles on which our matter surface, uh, of, in, on which our matter actually lives, um, a line bundle uh, class on the matter curve. And it's a conjecture that this is the right object, which then counts the actual um, uh, states. Um, so um, th this can be exemplified in particular in the context of um, one um, uh, so-called one fluxes. Um, we have the geometry and um, can explicitly construct those four cycles, um, go through this um, um, uh, uh, analysis and uh, conjecture a form of the line bundle, the actual line bundle that counts the matter. And we did this in a particular toy model. So this is certainly not the um, uh, model of the universe, but just an application of this formula which goes beyond um, uh, current index. So um, quick conclusion, a model wide group of rational section comes in two pieces. The free piece um, is in one-to-one -one with the one gauge groups. The torsion piece describes the global structure of non-abelian gauge algebra, uh, gauge groups. Um, this can be um, a a applied for model building um, in guts and non gut scenarios. Um, specification of gauge data via Chow groups is a proposal to compute the mass of spectrum. And of course, there are many conceptual open, conceptual open questions, and then it would be a lot of work to um, systematize those examples. Thanks for your attention.